why aren't books square? Now, of course, books can be square. I've owned square books in the past, but those have mostly been children's books. Most of the time, books are rectangles. Right here I have a book which I'm thinking about uh, a lot lately because it's about to leave my collection. This is uh, John Gay's Trivia and Other Poems. It's a late 19th century edition of the poems of an 18th century poet. And there's something about this book that holding it in the hand is extremely satisfying. But why is the book shaped like this? Why isn't it shaped like this so that you open it this way, like some children's books? Why isn't it perfectly square? In fact, when you think about bookmaking technology and the history of the book, there's not a particular reason that it should be rectangular instead of square. Well, there's something about the ways in which we use technology where that technology affects us and we, in turn, are affected by the technology. And so I find it more satisfying to hold something like this in my hand, I hold some in my hand, that it be like this. However, if I'm not going to hold something in my hand, I often find it more satisfying to be in this shape. Well, what would be some examples of this? Well, for example, the same size as this is my cell phone. They're almost the exact same size. And although I can hold my cell phone like this, and will sometimes do that to take pictures, by and large, I tend to use it upright in this way. By the same token, normal paperback, and this is my tablet. You might notice they are basically the same size. They are oriented in much the same way. And when I use my tablet, you know, I expect to use my tablet uh, in an upright fashion. Can it be used sideways? Yes, and I do sometimes use it sideways. When? When I'm looking at video. Right now, I'm looking at a monitor, and you're looking at me maybe on a monitor as well. And when you look at something on the monitor, notice that monitors then are not upright, they're horizontal. You know, historically, televisions used to be more of a square, and that's because the movies used to be more in a square. That letterbox shape really came later. And then later on, as television technology changed to make it easier to move away from the picture tube, then we started to move that letterbox shape, uh, move away from the square to the letterbox shape for our televisions as well. There's something about the way that we interact in the world that says to us, if I'm going to hold the text in my hand in some way, and I'm going to interact with it, I want it to be upright. But if I'm going to be a little bit more of a passive observer, like I'm watching a movie or I'm watching television, uh, or if the way I'm manipulating it is far away from it, so I'm looking at a computer monitor, but I'm typing on a keyboard rather than touching the monitor itself, uh, then I want it to be letterboxed. And there are many ways in which we interact with our technologies in everyday, in everyday ways that we unconsciously accept these things as if they're kinds of cultural imperatives. Now, which is first? Is it that there's something natural about this, that just being a human with normal-sized human hands, uh, oriented in a normal way, that this is the way in which I desire to interact with both the book and a, and a phone? Uh, or is it that we culturally developed it and now we have that expectation? Well, the answer is both. We make technology to change the world around us, but by the same token, we ourselves are changed by our technologies. And so we really are interacting with them in many ways. Nowadays, we're looking at some changes where people want to move to uh, a more wearable technology. And some people, I think, are a little concerned that uh, as we move to wearable technology and embeddable technology, that the distinction between uh, us and our technology will be less clear. But the truth is, we've always interacted with our technology in much the same way. When I swing a baseball bat, which is a stick, I'm essentially using that bat as an extension of my own two arms. When I wear a baseball mitt, which is essentially just leather sewn together, 
I'm making my hand larger and using it as an extension of that hand. So the next time you're using any piece of technology, whether it be a cell phone, whether it be a landline phone, uh, whether it be uh, your, your vehicle with the steering wheel, uh, anything that you use, uh, just take a moment to think about the ways in which you accept certain things uh, out of that technology and that technology just seems to fit you properly because humans made it for humans and then we ourselves have adapted ourselves to the limits of our own technologies.